Good morning, everyone. Once again, we want to thank all of you for being here, especially uh, our guest. As was mentioned earlier, we are the Westchester region of the New York City Church of Christ. We're one of 11 regions that are meeting in the New York metropolitan area. And this coming fall, we're going to have an all-region church service where all the regions are going to come together and it's going to be held at Lehman College. So you can be uh, looking forward to that this fall as we uh, uh, once again get to see all of the disciples from all over the area. That should be a lot of fun. Today, I'm going to continue a theme that uh, we've been on for the last few weeks, just looking at the Israelite nation. And uh, last week, we talked about a model nation and how God wanted Israel to model contentment. Today, we're going to talk about being a model uh, nation, and that is in giving honor to God, in giving honor to God in how we live our lives. So let's pray together as we get started. Our God, Father in heaven, thank you for the honor of being in your kingdom, for the honor of salvation through Jesus Christ, uh, for true purpose and meaning in life, for direction from your word, and for allowing us to be in a fellowship of believers who know you and love you and who are trying to help us know you better and get to, to heaven, God. Bless our time together today. Speak to us through your spirit. Uh, Teach us how to draw closer to you and to live lives that give you glory and honor. In your son's name we pray. Amen. One thing that gives God joy is when his children do well. God's greatest desire is to see our lives give him glory. We are his children. He created us in his image. And God really has taken so many risks with us. And to me, one of the greatest risks is free will. He does not try to control us. He doesn't want us to obey out of fear. He doesn't want us to do what's right because we have to, but because we want to. But in giving us that freedom, the risk is that we will not listen to him and we will not obey him and that we will live lives that dishonor him rather than give him honor. And that I believe this is what God wanted for the Israelite nation as he brought them out of a Egyptian slavery and he took them into the promised land. His desire and his dream is that they would show the other nations, this is how you give honor and praise and glory to God. And God wants the same thing for his church today, for the church to show the world the light of God. And that living by God's word and living by God's standard is the best way to live. Now, you have the freedom to choose whatever you want to do, but God is hoping that we will choose him and live according to his will and his ways. And so here in, in Exodus chapter 20, in Exodus chapter 20 says, and God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, and this, this is the first of the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And so what does God want? God is saying, look, I want you to honor me as God as your creator, as your heavenly father. Now, sometimes when we see this word in here where it says that God is a jealous God, we go, jealousy? Well, that's not, that's not righteous. That's not holy. Really, the word could be translated for I am a zealous God. I am zealous for you. And there is a right type of jealousy. It's the jealousy that I have for my wife, Cynthia, after 41 years of marriage. I don't 
don't mind if a brother gives her a gift or a little flower or something every now and then. But if you start doing it every week, we, we're going to have to have a conversation because I am a jealous husband. All right. And you can you can mark that down. All right. But a word of encouragement every now and then, you know, a, a, a little hey, sister, you're doing well. Uh, God bless you. I'm good with that. But let's just leave it at that because she belongs to me. And in the same way, this is the way God feels about us. You are mine. I created you in my image and I want to have a unique and special place in your life that no one else has. Here in Deuteronomy chapter six, Moses is trying to help God's people here. He says, fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you, for the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous God. His anger will burn against you and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Here again, Moses is trying to get God's people to understand how he has zeal for them. And sometimes in life, we cannot even, we can forget that everything that we have and everything we are is from the supreme being known as the Lord God Almighty. And when we ignore him or, 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 or we dishonor him, it doesn't make him happy. But the opposite does make him happy. When we do what's right, when we take the time to remember him, it gives joy to his heart. And so here you see uh, uh, Moses says, fear the Lord your God. And that word fear means stand in awe give reverence to, or it can also be called honor. It, it all comes together. And when you think about the creator of the universe, what he's saying to those of us as his children, I want you to revere me. I want you to stand in awe of who I am and to give me honor by the way that you conduct yourself and by the way that you relate to me. To honor is to hold in high respect, reverence, and distinction. And we, we give honor to many people in many different situations, but none should compare to the honor that we give to God. He should stand alone as to the honor that he receives from, from us. Matter of fact, the Good News translation translates Deuteronomy 6 this way. It says, honor the Lord your God. Let me turn there. Or if, if this is the message. Let's read this one first. Deeply respect God, your God. Serve and worship him exclusively. Back up your promises with his name only. Don't fool around with other gods, the gods of your neighbors, because God, your God, who is alive among you, is a jealous God. Don't provoke him igniting his hot anger that would burn you right off the face of the earth. And then in the Good News translation, it says, honor the Lord your God. Worship only him and make your promises in his name alone. Do not worship other gods, any of the gods of the peoples around you. If you do worship other gods, the Lord's anger will come against you like fire and will destroy you completely because the Lord your God, who is present with you, tolerates no rivals. God tolerates no rivals. My wife tolerates no rivals, none. She's not interested in being in my top 10 or my top three. She's only interested in being in one place in my heart. I'm hearing some amen from the women out there. And that's number one. Number one, it's not going to make her feel good if I tell her, you know, you, you're in my top two. No. And, and God is the same way. God is like, I want no rivals. 
I don't want anything in your life to come before me. And yes, I will bless you and I will, I will uh, just abundantly overwhelm you with good things. But don't let those things come before me. I tolerate no rivals. I'm a jealous God. Give me the honor that I deserve. In Tawalawi, in doing communion last week, uh, read some out of Malachi. And one of the scriptures he referred to was here in Malachi 1.6, where God says, as a son honors his father and a servant his master, as if I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord God Almighty. And God is our father. And he's saying, I want to know where, where's the honor? Really, that's due me. And, and really, as, as parents, those of us who are parents, nothing excites us more than when our children succeed. I mean, when my daughter graduated first grade, there we were as if it was the greatest event on the, on the, in the history of mankind with cameras and, and video cameras and, and all kinds of friends. Everybody take pictures. And, and, and then when they graduated from high school, there we were again, relatives coming from out of town, spending all kinds of money just to see them for a few seconds. That's all you get. Walk across an aisle. And then when they graduated from college, the same thing, getting there early, you know, trying to plow through all these people who feel the same way we do about their kids, that there's nothing greater than my daughter getting her college degree. And then when they graduated from graduate school, there we were again, proud to be in the audience, taking historic photographs that are now plastered on the wall. That's my child. Create it in my image with my brains. And so you're fired up about that. God feels the same way about you. When you obey him, he's honored. Especially when you, when, when everyone else around you is not. You know, when you're in high school and you feel the peer pressure, should I say a little prayer before I eat this? God forsaken whatever they've given me here in the cafeteria? Should I bow my head and honor God or should I not? When you do what's right, God says, amen. That's my son, that's my daughter. They're giving me honor. Every time we deny temptation and we have the, the option to do what's wrong versus doing what's right. And every time we do what's right, God is saying, I am pleased. You're giving me honor. Every time you get into that altercation with your, 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 your wife or your significant other and, and you want to choke them and you step back. And you humble yourself and you say, I'm sorry, God is honored. But when you act like an idiot and say it's all their fault, God is dishonored. When we do what's right, it gives honor to God. Every good deed done in God's name honors him. When you serve in kids' kingdom, you honor God. When you, when you serve in any capacity in the church, you honor God. When you deny yourself, you give honor to God. And God says, well done proud of you because you chose to do what's right not because you had to do it but you chose to do it that's what God wants from all of us and yes he holds our pictures up on the plaque in his wall and says that's my son that's my daughter but whom I'm well pleased that's the life we live. That's why we live the lives we live. That's why we say no to the things we say no to and yes to the things we say yes to. Because we love the Lord God Almighty who has created us in his image and who's given us every good thing that we honor in our life, that we have in our lives. So let me leave you with some practicals here today. 
how can you honor God in your daily life? We're going to hit these real quick and the message will be yours. Number one, we honor God with our time, with our talents, with our treasure, and with our trials. You notice anything similar in this list? All T's, right? So if you can remember the T's, God will be pleased, okay? Just, just remember. All right, so we honor God with our time. You have the freedom to use your time however you choose to. God gives you that, that opportunity. But we honor God when we stop and we take time to consider what pleases him. Just your being here this morning, you took time to give honor to God. There are others who decided that they wanted to do something else, but you decided to brave the cold to be here today to give honor to God. The Bible teaches us, to, it says in Psalm 90, verse 12, to, to, to number our days. The psalmist says, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The Living Bible says, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. You only got so many days. And can you believe we're almost at the end of February here in 2023 already? You know, just, just last week, I was 40. Now I'm 66. What, what happened? Sometimes I can't even remember what age I am. I was like, Cynthia, help me out. Which, what, what decade am I in? As well as a lot of other things that I can't remember. <laughs> Do you take time? These days that are, are, are so few to say, look, in my life, I gave honor to God. Psalm 46, verse 10, the psalmist says, at least in, in quoting what God wants us to, to, to understand, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We, we got to take some time to, to stop and consider what is my purpose for being on this planet. God, what do you want me to do in the short time that I have? Let me acknowledge your greatness and your omnipotence. Let me stop and consider everything that I see around that you created out of nothing. Your magnificence, your holiness, your creativity. Be still. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. We just have to stop and, and look around and ask ourselves, what is this all about? And God is saying, I need you to take time to, to remember and know that I am God and that you need me in your life. Honor God with your time. Just don't use it all selfishly for you because it won't fulfill you anyway. And if you really want to have a fulfilling life, then empty your life. The way up is down. The way to be fulfilled is to empty. The way to be first is to be last. That's what the Bible teaches us. Secondly, honor God with your talents. You know, there's so many talented people on this planet and so many talented people in your room. And when it comes to the church, God, the Bible says in Romans 12, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesizing, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is 
contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. God has blessed you with gifts to give him glory. You know, sometimes I'm amazed at the talents that other people have because I could never imagine myself doing those things. But to think that God created somebody who can do that. I mean, I think about, you know, Kevin Finnerty went to Columbia and he teaches physics and chemistry, physics. You couldn't teach physics. I know what gravity is and that's about it. To know somebody that likes that stuff, that would go to school for that stuff. I'm just like, why? Why would you do that? You know, I, I majored in communications. That makes sense to me. But then there are other people with gifts and, and, and really God doesn't want you to compare your talents with other people's talents. I mean, if you've got the gift of, of singing, praise God. But if you don't have the gift of singing, then we need to let you know you don't have that gift so that, so that you can have a realistic evaluation of where you are. People have different gifts. And in this church, there are people that they just, they just have so, I mean, some people seem to me have the gift of joy. They just always seem to be up, right? And you look at those people and you go, what's wrong with you? Don't you know the world is dark? But they're like, hi. Kevin, Andy Finnerty, hi, how you doing? You know? You're like, do you ever have a bad day? And they look at you. I just depend on the Lord. But thank God that we have all these different talents because together they give glory to who? To God. That's why God gives you the gifts. If you're smart, it's because God made you smart. Yeah, you had to study, but God gave you that capacity. Third, thirdly, honor God with your treasure. He says, well, Sam, I don't have any treasure. Compared to the rest of the world, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And whatever God's blessed you with, he wants you to use it to honor him. Here in... Proverbs 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Honor God with your wealth. Moses reminded the people, God's people, he says, you may say to yourself, my power and strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Whatever you got is from God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above. It's God. And if God gives you a hundred dollars and he asks you for 10, what's your attitude? This is my hundred dollars. No, I'd be glad to give you 10 back. And that's what he asked for. Just give me 10 of the hundred back and I'll continue to bless you. God has blessed us so much. And he says, I want you to just not use that wealth or that house or that car or, those, or, or that money just for your own selfish gain. Use it to honor me. Sacrifice for me. Use it to help other people. Use it to make a difference in the world. That's why I gave it to you. So you could use it to honor me. Money is not a sin. But when we fall in love with it and we allow it to, to be first in our lives, then it leads us to some dark places. Money in and of itself is not evil. It's what we do with it. And God has blessed us, I mean, God has blessed us immeasurably more, has any church, than we could ever ask or imagine. 
are we being generous toward him? And then finally, honor God with your trials. So, well, Sam, what are you talking about? Honor God with my trials. Let me tell you something. You're going to face challenges in life, and some of us, we're facing them right now, whether it's spiritually, physically, health things you may be going through, financial things you may be going through, career things you may be facing. I don't know what it is. But if you live on this planet long enough, you're going to face some serious challenges in your life. You know, marriage, kids, family, whatever it may be. But God is honored when we remain faithful to him through those trials. And I was having a conversation last Sunday with Mimi Terribio and hearing her story and what she's been through lately when she had the car accident. And, and I told her, I said, wow, I'd love for you one midweek to share with the church what you've learned through all this and how you've grown in your dependence on God through this. Because, I mean, I didn't even understand how challenging uh, her, her physical situation has been. But her spirit, her demeanor, her heart, I'm here to serve the Lord. And I want to give every day to him. She's honoring God even through what, what really could have been a, 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 an unbelievable tragedy. But she's not blaming God. She's not blaming anybody. She's just using this to draw closer to the Lord. Your adversities, and we've talked about this before, are there for you to learn how to depend on God more and to give him honor. You know, the people we read about in the Bible that we, we admire the most, we admire them because of how they trusted in God through their struggle. You know, Joseph is one of my heroes. Why? Because, I mean, would I want to do what he did or, or go through what he went through? I'll be honest with you. No. Thank you, Lord, that you used him as an example to help me. But he remained faithful, thrown in prison, falsely accused. But he still trusted in God. And whatever trial you're facing right now, you can give honor to God through that trial by remaining strong in your faith and allowing him to use this to bring about spiritual maturity in your life. You can't grow without resistance. You can't grow without struggle. You can't grow without challenge. And that's why God allows it, because it refines us and it helps us transform more into the image of Jesus. Like you, when I'm going through it, I don't always see those things or think that way. But every time on the other side of it, I see God was trying to teach me something. The Bible says, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. God has promised to those who love him. When you're going through trial, when you're, when you're going through a struggle in your personal life, whatever it may be, God is watching and he's saying to the angels in heaven and everybody around, look how my son or my daughter is persevering through that trial. I'm proud of them. They're relying on me. And then here in Psalm 50, verse 14, the Bible says, sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill, fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Let me ask you a question as we come to a close today. Are you honoring God with your time? with your talents, with your treasure, and as you face trials. I know many of us are striving for this. Let's continue to do this. Say, so, well, Sam, I'm not really facing any of these things right now. Don't say that because here they come. All right.
Here they come. Are you living a life that honors the Lord God Almighty? That's why you're on this planet. He wants to look down upon your life, both now and in the end, when we see him face to face and hear him say what, church? Well done, good and faithful servant. God bless.